for the last three years, we at the center have been arguing that it's time to start a strategic redeployment uh, from Iraq. My co-author, Brian Katulis, and I first put our first report back in September uh, 2005. People raised two questions about it. Was it timely? And the other is, could you do it in a, in a reasonable, uh, uh, reasonable manner in, in a short period of time? We would argue now more than ever, it's important to set a date because this is the one thing that all of the factions in Iraq agree on, and we need to bring them together. We also feel that uh, by setting a specific date to get out, you will motivate the government in Iraq to do what they need to do to bring about meaningful reconciliation. If, when you set a withdrawal date, it's going to give you much more leverage with the countries in the region to work together to ensure that Iraq does not become uh, a, failed, a failed state. Attacks in Baghdad are down to four a day. Uh, two of the days we were in Baghdad, uh, there were no attacks in that city. Dora Market in Baghdad, once a war zone, is now a recovering war zone. Uh, there's a, a thriving gym with gym membership, a waiting list to get into the gym, and, and surreally Arnold Schwarzenegger posters on the walls from, from an earlier day. Uh, the Rashid Bank was open and conducting lots and lots of transfer payments. Uh, and, and interestingly, the, the uh, person in charge, there was a, 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 a male manager, but the deputy manager clearly in charge. She was a woman wearing a very flashy costume jewelry earrings, no abaya, and, and she had things to do and, and uh, um, talked to us a little bit, but really wanted to take care of her customers. Fascinatingly, we saw at least a half a dozen jewelry stores open. And there is no better sign of security in place than jewelry stores open. They absolutely want America to leave, but not yet and not soon. The uh, opinion was especially strikingly uh, conveyed in a meeting we attended at the headquarters of the Mithal al-Alusi party in Karada. This is a secular political party. They pulled 75 people into the, the, the leader of the party's office, and we had this impromptu sort of seminar on Iraqi and American politics. Fascinating. They were very, very concerned that America is going to withdraw too quickly, that we're not going to be able to cement the security goals. They, they believe that were that to happen, Iraq would fall back into the, the situation it just was. And frankly, I promised them that I would do everything I could to prevent that from happening. And, and I, I think one of the, the um, disagreements I have with the paper is a differing assessment of the capacity, the capability, and the driving factors behind the Iraqi government. The paper suggests, uh, I'll quote page four, the reason the Iraqi government has not made satisfactory progress toward national reconciliation, nor implemented critical power or revenue sharing laws, is because they are absent an incentive to truly take over their own affairs. And in fact, it's my belief that at least as significant a reason for Iraq's lack of political progress and slower military progress than in some ways this paper suggests, it's not a lack of will as much as it is a lack of capacity. As far as not being able to do anything in the Middle East until we're out, if we pull out and it collapses, we have zero credibility, and rightfully so. We've gone in, we kicked over the ash can, and we left. Um, you may have noticed I don't think the plan to go into Iraq was particularly a good idea, nor was it well executed. So you had a bad idea, poorly executed. And now we are where we are. I think that if we do the sudden withdrawal, we're going back along that route. We're taking a look without a significant study of the strategic impact, and we're assuming we're going to get certain results. What I don't see is the branch plans and the sequels, where a branch plan is we're starting down a path and something happens that we didn't anticipate. And so you have a plan ready to operate in that condition. A sequel is it goes as we plan, now what do we do? And you've got a bit of that with the we keep forces in the, in the Middle East. Right now, the conflict is mostly Shia on Shia and Sunni on Sunni. And that's not a bad thing for us. Because that doesn't spread outside of Iraq. That's power struggles within the Shia community and Sunni community that are both political and criminal slash violent. The danger with a Shia on Sunni is that the outside powers would feel a need to get involved. There's a great uh, Sunni fear of a, a Shia arc across there, going from Persia, across Iraq, and all the way over to Lebanon. And that's a, whether it's a legitimate concern or not is not the issue. The fact that it is a deep concern for them. 
both sides will begin supporting their factions. Civil wars tend to be violent to begin with, then grow completely out of control and often take a decade or more to resolve and tend to drag in surrounding areas. And of course the surrounding areas uh, have the resources that essentially drive the world economy, oil. 